Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be covering networking best practices and things to consider when building your network. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell down below for more videos like this one. Now let's begin! So what's important to think about when building your network? Well, networking best practices should have you thinking about a few different things. Security, redundancy and growth, simplicity and flexibility, cost and manageability, just to name a few. Let's go through why each of these things matter and what things to consider for each. First and foremost, the security of your network should be your highest priority. Just like you don't go around telling everyone your social security number or your credit card number, we don't want others to be able to access the secure data on your network. Whether you're building a network for your company or for your home, you're going to want to ensure that your network is secure. Having secure passwords with capital letters, numbers, and special characters, and ensuring you change your passwords often are of utmost importance. You're also going to want to consider adding firewalls, VPNs, or virtual private networks, and virus protection software to ensure the security of your network. Don't worry, if you don't know what a VPN is, I'm going to go over it with you in a separate section. Another very important thing to note is redundancy. When you're designing a network that requires little to no downtime, it's important to incorporate redundancy for the event of a failure. It's especially important that critical devices have redundancy built in. For example, let's say you're building a network for a hospital. A large majority of the medical devices in a hospital rely on network connectivity. You wouldn't want a network failure to affect an ongoing surgery or prevent a medical alert from occurring. There are a few ways you'd want to prepare to prevent this type of scenario from happening. Adding redundant power supplies to switches will help in the event of a power supply overloading or failing. Similarly, having a UPS or an uninterruptible power supply will keep your network running in the event of a power outage. You also have redundant switches and redundant connections between switches or access points in the event that a cable or a switch were to fail entirely. Also, don't forget, you always want to have some sort of additional ports available on your switches to prepare for additional devices being added to your network. You never know when your network's going to need to expand. As you would in your normal day-to-day -day life, it's always recommended to explore multiple options. Take into account if the device meets your physical requirements, the processor speed, and throughput are all there, and then evaluate cost. I know when I'm making a big purchase, I like to weigh a few different options before doing so to get the best value for my specific requirements. And finally, you'll always want to design your network in a way that's easiest for you to manage. Oftentimes, you'll have a small team covering a very large network, so cloud-managed solutions that can be accessible from anywhere with very little downtime is a huge benefit. You'll also find a benefit in a network management solution. It'll allow you a single pane of glass visibility into your specific network. Keep these things in mind when designing your network and you'll set yourself up for success. You'll be the one that benefits from a well-designed network in the long run, so take the time to evaluate the best options and make the best network for your needs. I hope this video has given you a good understanding of some networking best practices to make your network successful. Thanks for watching and don't forget to click that subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And don't forget, advancing with us is advancing your future. Have a good one.